They won't, because they've been uh, taking this pretty seriously, mm -hmm. as we've seen throughout this entire tournament. They've been looking really, really good, so I'm excited to excited to go. Yeah, I, I, I am as well, and on that note, uh, Clan Milk versus Grab Lords, it has officially started here, guys. So let's go ahead and look to jump right into it. We have Grab Lords going to be on the Legion side, Clan Milk on the Hellborn team here in Game 1 of this, of course, best out of three. Now, I will say, I did get the chance to uh, talk to Milk Fat, actually, earlier today, um, on that note uh, as well, Milkfat ended up having to uh, drop out. We're not exactly sure why huh. just yet. He did have to drop out from Clan Milk, unfortunately. Um, but he was replaced by a guy named Gigi Sucka on the roster. Oh, okay. Um, I, I don't know if you know him. I believe yeah, you might know, know him, of course. So uh, I don't think he has too much experience in the competitive scene necessarily, but he is a player that's been around for a little bit. But he's uh, replaced Milkfat, and as you can see, he's playing today here uh, for Clan Milk. But also Milkfat was mentioning to me that Expect to maybe, maybe see some Berserker play today. So, Oh, really? I was excited for that. To say the nice. Least, so. We'll see. Yep. I, I would love to see some Berserker play. You've hyped him up quite a lot, and uh, I'm excited to see that. Um, so hopefully they do not disappoint in that regard. The blind bands have finished now. Pebbles and Marax is banned over here on the Legion side by, um, well, it's Grab Lords, but their 240B is tagged up. Yeah. And uh, Hellborn has banned Ophelia and Tundra, so pretty standard there. Uh, uh, actually, from both sides, really. Now, the locks have started, and we're starting off with a Polywog Priest lock. We've been seeing a lot more Polywog Priest lately in the last uh, few days or so. Yeah, uh, he's obviously been a very, very highly valued hero amongst the competitive scene. Really, that first lock, even the first pick from the regular picking stage, uh, it's not too often, or not too rare. Uh, to see that. I, I do also want to bring up while we have a little bit of time here, again, for, as far as Grab Lords is concerned, I, I did give them a, a little bit of a harsh time in the group selection show. In the group selection show, I remember that when we were going over Group D, we're like, we got all these teams, and then we have Grab Lord, you know. <laughs> well, what, what, don't expect it. I, I, I mean, like I said, it's 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 unfortunate for them, it really is, that they are in such a very difficult group, but honestly, you know, making it to the group stages in the first place, that's, you know, they're one of 32 teams in the world right now, for Heroes of New Earth at least, that's made it to the round of 32 uh, here right. in the group stages, so they got to be at least happy for that, and it's good to see also, I, I do give them all the credit in the world for actually playing their matches, and apparently, and I would hope that they're going to be finishing it off, because as we just talked about, you know, Easy Breezy, an example there where they lost their first two games, they were disappointed, and, you know, I don't know if that was the exact reason, but the last two matches they forfeited, it looks like even a third one today. So it's like, at least they're playing out. you got to give them all the respect in the world for that. And uh, getting the experience, you know, use that for their next tournament. So really got to look at that for Grabblers and, you know, give them a give them a nice pat on the back even. so Yeah, it's very easy to get discouraged when you have a, you know, a record that they do. But, yeah, good, a lot of credit to them um, to sticking it out in this tournament. And, again, they're going to learn a lot from playing these teams. So, um they're only going to progress even further as a team. Yeah. And now the uh, the locks are actually finished. We got Master of Arms Glacius. Again, we're seeing more Master of Arms. Uh, Torture and Moon Queen. Moon Queen, that's kind of a interesting one. That would be really fun to see a Moon Queen play. Don't really particularly like, particularly like the hero that much just because her lane presence is quite weak and a yeah. very, very short attack range. But she can be very, very strong. You know, the very, very late game. Um, <laughs> she just pushes tower so darn fast with the, you know, one of the glaives there. And now, uh, and then finish off the lock with a Kraken. Then we go right into the bands. Mage Bane, Dark Lady, right off the bat. And then Draconis Tempest. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. The silhouette's still out there as she far is. as the carry option. But, yeah, as you mentioned, Mage Bane, Dark Lady, and Draconis all taken care of. And the banding state didn't even forsake an archer on top of that. So, silhouette. Unless Clan Milk bans silhouette here, that's going to be a very, very uh, powerful carry option here. Uh, for either one of these teams to pick up. So we'll see. You know, you did talk about Moon Queen, who obviously in that late game stage, if she happens to get to that point, uh, can by all means be very, very powerful. As Demented Shaman is actually the last band there. So again, Silhouette is left open. Um, but that early game presence, her range is awful compared to really every other range, carry, range hero in the game, frankly. Uh -huh. I think it's, what, like 350 or something. It's just uh, pretty damn bad. So, uh, yeah, it is uh, 350 attack range. Yeah, so... Pretty awful, but again, uh, if it comes to that mid to late game especially, she can be very powerful. Now, Jeraziah is going to be the first pick over here for Clan Milk. You see a quick response, or excuse me, for 24B, 240B. For Clan Milk, quick response, Bubbles and Electrician right away picked up for them. And this is just, we're, we're just going through this. <laughs> we are. Here. Um, yeah, the Jeraziah pickup, I love that. I, I think it's a very strong hero. Bubbles Electrician, that's kind of like old school Clan Milk, if you ask me. It's, it's actually very TT Esports like. Uh, to pick up Bubbles Electrician like that. Um, the, the problem with that is 
both bubbles and electrician kind of need solo lanes, so it's kind of like you've already set your solo lanes very, very early. Yeah. Um, that's the only drawback. I Electrician's okay. Again, he's very, very strong early game if you put him in a favorable lane. But late game, he kind of t tapers off a bit. And now an, uh, hmm. a Nighthound pickup there from, well, it's Moravis, but Shams is on that third position. And uh, I love Nighthound. It's very, very good, actually, against Jerezaya. Yeah, because of the smoke cloud, I take it. Right. Very effective tool against him. So, yeah, not a hero we see talked about. Man, we are just, again, just really going through this picking phase here, even to the lock picks. Here we go. Polywalk <laughs> Here we go, Glacius, Glacius, Master of Arms, and then Moon Queen, sure enough, Moon Queen, just love saying it like that. The final pick for a 240B, so a very, very quick uh, hero selection stage, at least, between these two teams. So, you know, let's kind of take a quick uh, look here. We'll start with the Legion side over here on Grab Lords. We're looking at Polywog Priest, Moon Queen, Aluna, Myrmidon, and Jeraziah. So, what do you uh, think of the Legion lineup over here, Trav? Oh, boy. It just looks very scattered. Um, it doesn't really look like they have any kind of sort of strategy with it. I just kind of feel like they picked heroes that they wanted to play. <laughs> um, the Moon Queen and Myrmidon, that really doesn't synergize at all. Mm -hmm. uh, Myrmidon could synergize quite well with something like a, a more point stun. Like Myrmidon actually Polywog or Myrmidon Magmus or something like that. I assume Polywog is going to go mid though. So Myrmidon's one of those heroes that, granted, he's very, very strong. I actually really love the hero. But you don't see him anywhere because you like to land him with something... Behemoth, be Hammerstorm. Magic, right, a, a point like stun or a set stun. Um, when you don't have that, it's, it's actually quite hard to really get a good um, weed field there actually hitting somebody because it's actually easy to dodge. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I don't know. I, 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 like the, I like the heroes. They're fun, but I just don't think they match well right, Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, and that's something we've actually talked about a lot, you know, Miramana every now and then comes up as like, why don't we see Miramana, well, it's, you know, the Trilane era, I mean, that was really the go-to support, again, with the assistance of a Hammerstorm, of a Behemoth, of a Magmus, and it just fits so well for that, that point stun as you are putting it, but here, not so much, gonna be a Trilane, though, apparently, we are gonna see a Moon Queen, Myrmidon, and a Luna Trilane, now it technically is triple range, of course, uh, and apparently, at least for the time being, they're going to be matched up against what is a Glacius Nighthound up here. So, now I would think Clan Milk, of course, going to make a quick adjustment when it comes down to uh, starting off this game and seeing how the lanes are turning out. I'm sure Master of Arms will eventually go up there. You see right there, the pounce away from Shams actually coming out, nearly getting caught by that weed field, but able to pounce away and be successful. So that pounce, very, very effective tool for not only offensively, but defensively right there, as we saw already. But how do you, uh, how do you see this trial lane at least faring for 240B? I don't know. Um, again, the most important thing always in a tri is lane control and lane position. Uh, they do have that ward actually placed there, so that's going to be good. It's going to prevent that, that pull from happening. But as long as they're able to keep the lane back, the, the first thing you have to do in any tri lane, and I, I want to see more teams do this, is don't harass. Please, please don't harass. Because all that does is pull the creep wave towards you, and it actually pushes up your lane more than you want it to. Hmm. So the best thing to do is use the three heroes to your advantage in that lane, and mass deny as quickly as possible. You want to get that lane back before you do any kind of harassing. Um, because then it's impossible for the enemy heroes to actually get up to the to, to the creep farm, and, and, and farm those creeps safely. They can't do it uh, if you have proper lane positioning. So hmm. I, the tip I would give a lot of teams is just get those denies, get get that lane pushed back as you know as quickly as possible. Then you can position yourself, and, and you know t to give some good harass while your carry is farming. But otherwise, um, this lane should be fine. Uh, actually, Aluna was walking mid there for a second, but now she's walking back. And right there, already, bam, they lost it. They already got the deny from the archer and they uh, on the Hel Hellward side. And actually, some initiation coming out onto Merman on the stun come out from. Master of Arms, and then some counter initiation coming on to Glacius. Good weed field uh, hit, and actually Glacius wow. is going to go down. The Bloodlust goes to Kiwi Machine there, playing that Moon Queen. Yeah, that was a very good turnaround from Grapplers, actually. You mentioned that weed field. Very easily dodgeable. Oh, oh, we see right there another stun going to come with a mini stun from the nuke from Moon Queen. And sure enough, Kiwi Machine here on Moon Queen is already 2-0 to start off this game. So Grab Lords, I mean, you could not have asked for anything better, really. Right. Maybe getting the kill in the Night Helm, but still, 2 nothing start for them. I mean, obviously Clan Milk, they had a great jump themselves. There's no reason to not play very aggressively right there, but that was, great. again, a great weed field actually landed by Roven here. Twice. On Remedon, twice, exactly. The that <laughs> He said they don't have that point stun, but they got it long enough, apparently, and Mirabadon knows what he's doing. I mean, they did snap pick this Mirabadon, so it's uh, clearly that he at least is comfortable with the hero here 
and landing those weed fields. So actually a pretty good start here for uh, for 240B. And you see them even keeping the creep wave just out of the tower range. Going to make sure to control this lane here and get back in their favor. So Trilane actually not working out too too bad here, Trav. Well, I just think that was kind of poorly played there by Clan Milk. And, and, but yeah, to, to their credit, those are some great uh, Myrmidon weed fields they hit. Uh, they actually synergized it a little bit with the moon, the moon beam coming out from Moon Queen, which is very, very hard to do. I, I think it was more... I don't want to say that the, that was like planned. It was just <laughs> simply good, well placed weed fields. Yeah. So um, good job there by R O Ven or R I'm guessing Roven. It's Roven. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm saying it. Good job, Roven. Oh. Actually, Moravis takes out Smoker there, uh, playing that Pawwaw Priest. So good job by Moravis uh, playing that Bubbles. He's now up to 322 gold per minute. Of course, that's fluctuated. But um, yeah, he's so. Good job there by Moravis. Yeah, unfortunately I didn't catch really much of that action there, but I can't say I'm too surprised again. Moravis, one of the better players, honestly. He, he's such an impressive player here for Clan Milk and a big part of their success, of course. And uh, playing a solo mid bubbles against that Polywire Priest, uh, picking up the kill for him. Very, very good. Aluna going to get caught out here by Master of Arms and Glacius. Weedfield coming out. Not going to land, though. He was hoping that Glacius maybe would have ran up a little bit. I get the idea there. But Roven, unfortunately, not able to land the Weedfield until the final auto attack takes out Aluna. So... All that momentum, you can say, even from the beginning of this game, almost kind of taken away right there as middle goes down. And then Aluna gets picked off, uh, roaming a little bit near that top room. But yeah, Bubbles, I mean, when it comes to Creep Farm, actually, Polywalk Priest, even right now, is leading by the one Creep kill. So, Creep Farm, not too bad here for Polywalk Priest. It's just Bubbles got a little bit aggressive. And obviously, as we saw the end result, Polywalk Priest wasn't able to hold it off. So, yeah, I think Polywalk has a slight edge in the middle lane. But, um,. That was just simply well played by Moravis. Moravis is a great mid player, and uh, he took advantage of it, of his, uh, you know, his experience in mid, and was able to get the kill on on Smoker there. But now we do have a try v try situation up here at the top, and uh, I don't know. I, I think it really just goes to who gets the better positioning and who goes on who, because that smoke cloud is extremely strong in a situation like this. Mm -hmm. Um, so as long as Glacius doesn't get out of position, actually right there, very well synergized by all three of those heroes, able to take off the Glacius. So I was just talking about they don't really have a, exactly like long points done. It seems that the Moonbeam is enough. Yeah. <laughs> and they're hitting this very, very well, so I'm actually quite impressed. Well, yeah, no, that's where you can tell. I mean, they're in Vent, Skype, whatever they're using. Right. I mean, the communication is there. It really is. You you can tell, as we just saw a perfect example. I mean, everything is happening basically at the same time. And so, yeah, he can. He, Glacius thought he could avoid the weed field, but all of a sudden that mini stun happens from the moonbeam, and then the Aluna, and we're lightning, of course. And before he knows it, he's locked down by the weed field, and the auto attacks are enough to finish him off. So, yeah, again, very good execution coming out here. Uh, from 240p and again moon queen with yet another kill so her farm I mean is, is superb right now now I will say it's not the most impressive creep score by any means, but it is 15 and 4 So it's solid enough, but again those three hero codes, I mean the bloodlust kill really pus pushing her GPM up there um, I, I do want to get your opinion real quickly on Jeraziah and how he's building actually he has a three in the heal and he actually went two in a righteous aura hmm. Still not any points into protective charm just yet. Do you have any logic for that or? Uh, I I don't know I, I'm really not quite sure, actually, because that <laughs> the protective charm would be very, very good against bubbles. You know, yeah. if he, if he d tries to gank him with the uh, with the kelp field, it's going to be very, very. Good. Actually, some action coming out in mid Myrmidon and gets caught by the kelp field. So does the Luna. She walks out of it, gets stunned. Kind of a questionable decision there. Tries to get a power throw off for some extra damage, but she will go down as well. So good job there by the roaming squad of Creams and GG Sucka and Moravis using that kelp field. But yeah, I, I'm I don't really see a point to not level up that protective charm. To answer yeah. your question, yeah, and, and it's one of those cases too. You know, we talk about this. Obviously, Righteous Sara can be powerful it's in, in its own right, but you know, the the more levels you invest into Righteous Sara, you know, the longer it's going to take to get that protective charm leveled up. And you know, sure, you may get the level one eventually, but it only lasts, I believe, the six seconds. We see right here, he's going to get jumped up, puts the heal bomb out, but will this be enough to get away? Electrician is diving, has the nuke right there. The electric shield activated. Jerzy has no mana left to do anything. Just trying to do a little bit of ring around the rosy again. They are coming into play a little bit. But it's just not going to be nearly enough. He'll eventually tick down as actually Master of Arms comes in and takes the kill from Electrician. Not too sure about that there, but yeah, at least they got the kill. That's the important thing. So a little bit uh unfortunate kill still, you could even say, by GG Sucker there. <laughs> that was like blatant kill still. That was kind of funny. Usually you don't, you know, scream KS, KS in these yeah. competitive games. So that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, Nighthound doing a good job up here. He is actually, he's, look at his creep arm. He's 20 and 3. Not bad. Uh, Moon Queen's you know, beating him just a little bit, but they do have those kills up in the top lane to help him with that. Now, actually, Nighthound looks like he's probably going to go roam around mid now that he has that permanent invisibility, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think Polly has any idea. 
He does have a haste rune bottled up though. Oh, but the kelp no. field will nullify that completely. Yeah, you see right there, yeah. The bubbles comes in just uh again, talk about communication, no doubt happening there for Clan Milk between Nighthound. Again, that's Shams and uh, Moravius on the bubbles. Um, now, okay, so Nighthound, obviously, you mentioned he's level 6. He's got that permanent invisibility, pending uh, attacks and whatnot. How prepared does 240 be, need to be for I mean, should they already have revs? We do see a revelation actually down. They're going to catch Nighthound right here. Nighthound does not realize. Out comes a great weed field, and there's the damage to get the kill. So right on cue, even Moon Queen even activated her ultimate yeah. there in the Moon Finale. I don't even know if that's 100% necessary, but still, great coordination again. So as I said and talk about it, sure enough, they have a revelation down and it works out there against Nighthound. I think that was fine actually because if Nighthound was able to actually get out of all that you know, sequence of stuns and whatnot and pounce to a creep far away, there's a small chance that he actually could have gotten away. So I don't think that's the biggest deal, but that was actually really good um, patience there from Moon Queen sitting there. I mean, he had full vision. She had full vision of the Nighthound there, but she was wanting to wait and kind of play dumb until the rest of his team was in position to mm -hmm. you know, actually get the kill. So well played there by Kiwi Machine. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Moon Queen, 410 gold per minute. He's level 6. I mean, he, he, you brought up the point. You know, pending, or maybe that early laning phase, not the most powerful, but honestly, she's won the lane. I mean, that's pretty cl clear by now. She can be a very dangerous to mid to late game hero, as you're stressing, too. So, does Clan Milk have something to be really worried about here with the success of Moon Queen so far? Um, yeah, I think they do. I, I, I mean, Moon Queen's late game potential is huge and the problem with Moon Queen actually some little harass there coming out from Nighthound. The, actually Nighthound is beating Moon Queen at level surprisingly enough and some initiation coming over here on the Master of Arms. He is only level 3 but some support coming out from Moravis as he pops that regen rune as he's a uh, Kelp fielding the Roost Dog who's playing the Luna who's now 0 and 3. Kind of unfortunate there but good good response from Clan Milk. Yeah. Yeah, but so as, as you're mentioning about Moon Queen again, it, going to the late game stage she can be very powerful. But great, great responsing responses like that from Clan Milk obviously help them, and at least to support everyone around Moon Queen. You know, not doing that great right now. It's uh, it really is just Moon Queen and everyone else on the team not too well. Now Electrician is going to Kyrie at the bottom line. Will purge himself, trying to run away the path throw hits. Not enough for the kill off. In comes Miramidon as actually the Electric Joel from Polywall Priest can be played by Smoker there. Picks up the kill, so great kill. Now the tower was taken out. Yeah. In favor of the Hellborn team, so that is kind of unfortunate, as uh, Jerazai was kind of nearby, but obviously maybe pursuing that electrician as well. So, yeah. Well, yeah. As I was saying about Moon Queen, if she can get to that late game stage, she is very, very scary. She gets her core items like a Shrunken Head, Geometer Spain. She is a force to be reckoned with. Of course, that, that Whispering Helm usually comes before anything else. But the problem with her is actually getting out of that lane phase successfully. So she's pretty much done that. Now they are trailing though. In about 3,500 gold, 1,200 experience. That's just due, I think, to Moravis is doing a fantastic job in this game. Really roaming around well. Uh, he pretty much won his lane in mid, despite, you know, Polly has pretty good creep farm, but it is a Polly. It's very easy to just spam the wave and get CS that way. But yeah, no, Moravis is really controlling this game right now, so props to him. Yeah, he has uh, been, I mean, 4 0 oh, 2. The numbers speak for itself. He's been involved in 68 kills here as a solo mid hero. Actually, pretty damn impressive again. Ten, ten minutes into the game here, as you're talking about, though, too. 4,000 gold lead in favor of Clan Milk. We have about a 2,000 experience lead on top of that. So, overall, you could say, as far as team stats go, you know, looking pretty good here for Clan Milk. But you also talked about uh, Moon Queen, her build. She has finished the Whispering Helm now. Uh, in fact, she even takes over a Skeleton King with it. And she's now going to send that to the Ancients, of course, and start doing some stacking herself. So, some good microing going on here from Kiwi Machine. Uh, again, looking very, very effective here early on. Now in the middle lane, actually, Polar Priest catching. Now we're going to see some wars come down. There's a touch of that uh, kill field on top, or the weed field on top, excuse me. Out comes the Magic Carp as well, the power throw. Get the kill, however, uh, but at what cost? Right here, Polar Priest going to get turned around on. And now we see Aluna also falling. So the smoke cloud kelp field combination right there, keeping them in place and able to at least make it a two-for-one exchange. So good job by 240B initially, but, you know, again, that's Clan Milk that we saw at the top. We now see in the middle lane. I mean, great responses on their part. And they get yet another, yet another couple of kills as a result of it. Now at the bottom lane, Jeraziah also in a lot of trouble. You see the offensive master's call used on a cakes right here just to make sure to get close enough. As actually kicks will get credit for the kill on a Jeraziah who has actually been struggling, not doing too well here for 240B so far. Yeah, I wanted to say about that mid lane right before Moravis went down. That was just fantastically played by him, getting that kill filled off. He knew he was going to die, but he saw his, you know, his allies TP in to help him. So the important thing was to keep the, the enemies in place with that kill field right before he died. And he was just had a split second before he was able to do that and got it off successfully. So mm -hmm. really well played there by, by Moravis. I was actually 
questioning that if they should really TP to help him because I think he was going to die before he was able to cast anything. But yeah, with a split second left, he got that kelp filled off, and it made all the difference in the world. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it set up actually a pretty good smoke bomb, which is still level one, of course, not surprising there. Uh, and although Night Hound, he is actually currently around, sitting around that top rune area, been roaming around a little bit, but maxing out that pounce first, not going for the backstab, but I bring up the smoke claw, you know, again, leveling that up, actually pretty damn powerful, especially because of the radius. Uh, it gets pretty massive uh, when you get to, when you get it to that level four mark. So uh, the smoke cloud, and also as you're stressing from the selection stage as well, it actually is a great tool against your like Jeraziah, not being able to use his abilities in it. And on top of that, Night Hound a very popular candidate, no matter Jerzy or not, for that Nullfire Blade, which, you know, already with the Quick Blade picked up, yeah. wouldn't be surprised to see that here from him. Yeah, that's. I didn't even think about that. It is a good idea to get Nighthound when you see a Jerzy, and he was first picked. Jerzy was. Yeah. So, uh, Nighthound is definitely a hero. It's not like, oh, well, you can get a Nullfire Blade. It's like, you do get a Nullfire Blade on, on uh, Nighthound, so it just works itself out perfectly. The wards are dropped here from Smoker, playing that Plywog Priest, as all five heroes in the Legion side are trying to push this top tower, and... Uh, Actually, I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. Yeah, well, we got a homecoming stone pour coming in from Kicks. The wards easily fall right there. Legion team not doing too much. Moon finale is activated. Oh, look at Kicks dropping. An electrician is going to fall right there. Great quick burst coming out from Moon Queen and the rest of the team. Jerazai, Protector Charm goes up. Bubbles in the midst of it all. Getting tucked tied. Bubbles will fall. The Souls Blast is now going to be used. And G Grab Lord's playing very aggressive now. They are definitely going to push this tower in. Again, I don't know if they're going to be able to get it. We do have a Bubbles buyback. Bubbles quick show support. He misclicked right there. The Red Aluna's done. And this could be huge. Actually, Master of Arms goes down. Nighthound is able to get away, but Bubbles, Nighthound, and Glacius are not going to be able to fight this anymore. They need to play very careful here. Oh, Moravis, a big mistake right there. He panicked. He smashed the Q button twice in a row. He poured in maybe a foot, and <laughs> then he, I even think he used the Song of the Sea right after, thinking he was going to be in the midst of them. So, big mistake there. And Grapple Lord's holding their ground, man. Oh, and Cl Clan Milk is just kind of playing sloppy. And actually, I watched at the very beginning of that fight, and Shams was kind of walking back and forth on this top river. It's like he couldn't decide which way he wanted to walk up. Like, all the way around the left, or, you know, around this corner on the right above the rune. And like, he just kind of stood there and couldn't make up his mind. And, yeah. and <laughs> wasted a lot of time. I mean, if he was up there for the initial go, I feel like he it would have been completely a, a fight in Clan Milk's favor, but they didn't have Nighthound, because, yeah, I don't know, Shannon, what were you doing right there, buddy? <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then, of course, the buyback by Moravis. I didn't see the Shell, sur shell Surf misclick, but... Uh, I'll take your word for it. That's that's unfortunate. And when you have a buyout like that and you don't do anything with it, it's very very unfortunate. Yeah. And now we do see the second quick blade purchase by Nighthound. So again, the Noel Fire Blade very likely going to be finished soon. Uh, I want to go back to Moon Queen again, a hero we don't see too often on the competitive scene nowadays. Uh, talk about her build a little bit as far as her skill build. She maxed out her Moonbeam first, and now she has a two-two into both the Multi Strike and Lunar Glow. Do you think uh, maxing out that Moonbeam actually made the most sense for her here? Oh, yeah. I mean, of course. I, I think that's pretty much the way to go. Uh, it gives her that spammable ability. It does a lot of damage, 300 damage. And the one-second stun, I, I, I was taking that one-second stun lightly because it seems like it lines yeah. up quite perfectly with the Myrmidon weed field. Um, not something I'm too familiar with, but hey, you learn something every day. And uh, <laughs> Grab Lord seemed to understand that. They executed it well. But yeah, that I think her skill set is fine. Uh, not maxing out the Lunar Glow, is I think is okay. I think it's very important to have that multi-strike at least level 2 at this stage of the game when you get your Whispering Helm because it makes it so much easier to farm. In fact, I would like to actually really see her in the jungle rather than a lane. I yeah. think she should give the lane to somebody else. Maybe farm these triple stack agents that are here for it. She might need some assistance, um, but that would be a huge burst in gold. Oh, some possible initiation here at the top lane. A hasted bubble is coming for the flank of the ports are coming in. Look at Mor Moravius. Wow, excuse me there. He turns around right away, and he just runs away. That actually looks pretty funny. Now, the power throw actually hits, but Moravius should be fine. Uh, in the end, of course, with a hasten again, he's just going to run away and uh, be more than fine. Now, he places a... War God... Hiccups. He places a ward of sight right here, actually, at the Ancients. Um, so as he runs by, so now Moon Queen is going to go up here, and we'll see if she attempts some Ancients, because that could be a little bit deadly if uh, she goes for that. But no, going to run on by instead. Instead, they're grouping up here in the middle lane. Polywalk Priest pushing up. You got Myrmidon also up here. Bubbles kind of just sitting his ground. He's the only one here, though. Will the Legion team be able to catch him off guard? Uh, you do have a Glacius striding on over as well, but all five are here from 240B, so now we did see at the top lane, they did win the fight up there, but they weren't able to push the tower. We'll see how much damage they're going to be able to do here in the middle lane now, as again, all five of them are here. They got Polywar Priest Wars. I wonder how close he is to level 11 as well. Um, but again, with all five of them here, the experience not the greatest, even though they clean up some creep waves pretty quickly. The wards go down. Those are level one wards. Uh, so the tower is going to start falling. Will they have invulnerability? I don't think they might not even be up yet, actually. 
Uh, so this tower is going to fall, and uh, 240B will gladly take the gold from that as that is their first tower kill of the game. So, yeah, good aggressive push there from Grab Lords. Now they're going to fall back, and actually Nighthound will kind of spot them, but again, needs to be careful. We do have a... Uh, nope, that's not a bound. I thought almost on a bound eye, actually, but just some more revelations on Aluna. Speaking of that, bound eye, I mean, does that, is that something that needs to be picked up sooner than later here for 240B? Um, yeah, well, it was going to be hard because they don't have the, the most gold on their supports, and obviously you don't want to have someone like a Moon Queen buy that because she needs to build her core items first. Um, so I think just you know, getting a few revs here and there will help. And actually the that oh. good water site place is going to spot and they're actually going to take this triple stack. That is huge and unfortunate for Grab Lords there. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a really, really huge gold swing. Actually, a Polywog is invis. She did pop an invis rune from her bottle. So maybe she's trying to... She could actually maybe get a kill from a, a Moravis here. But oh, what he doesn't know is actually Nighthound is very, very close, but he's running the other way. Oh, he was too focused on getting this kill on a Luna, uh, and actually Pawlog Priest is now getting focused down, so was it really worth it? Mm, not quite sure. As the fight is still continuing on, Jerezai is just walking up in the midst of everybody, <laughs> tries to heal a Luna, but I don't think it matters, the Luna's gonna die anyway, and now they they really play this well. Oh, here Moon comes Queen. Moon Queen with the ultimate, Soul's Blessing activated by Jerezai. The Mermin on Weedfield actually does hit, but the defensive, night, or defensive Master's Call goes on a Nighthound, so he will be fine. The Grip comes out onto Mermin on there. This is a crazy fight now. They're pursuing uh, Moon Queen. She has one, like, maybe two more attacks there. She does TP out. Oh, no, but Shams does get the last, uh, the final attack there. Moravis picks off Roven there, so it end up being a very good exchange there for Clan Miller. Oh, man, I feel so bad for 240B. I mean, they had every chance to even come out on top of that fight, but it was just very sloppy, honestly. Starting with the poly I mean, it was great that he got the kill. Sure, chasing down the bubbles, but you got to wonder, you know, where was the rest of the team? It, it was They were on completely different pages right there. I mean, again, he got the great pick, but he had to see the support around him, so knowing that a fight was perhaps going to be started, but if everyone was there to help him, I mean, that could have definitely gone in the favor of our Legion team. We see the red power throw right there going through Master of Arms, but he barely stays alive with the little bit of life that he has. And on top of that, another big note on that fight is that Moon Queen. I saw her coming over. I was like, oh, man, that's a dangerous spot to be with that Moon Finale. But she is level 9 still. She does not have that level 2 ultimate, so it's right. only four beams. What well, it could have been three more beams if she happened to be level 11. So uh, that could have perhaps been big as well if they were able to use that effectively. But it seems like Grab Lords, that they kept on just trying so hard to maybe get something going in that fight. And Clan Milk, though, at the same time, of course, they controlled it very well, positioned very well and uh, ultimately came out on top as we saw, so. Yeah, also Bubbles did buy out for a second time. Oh, wow, yeah. So, uh, cool. I, I'm sh yeah, that d definitely played a role in, in a factor there because they did use quite a lot of resources to get that kill. Well, not a lot of resources, but, um, you know, Polywog did use that Invis rune to kill her, kill the Bubbles, that is, and, uh, but, you know, a good turnaround from Clan Milk, and the reason why this is going so well is a lot of grouping up and pub training, if you will, <laughs> coming out from Grabblers. I mean, they're actually playing quite well. I'm quite impressed with them. Um, but they are sticking, you know, very, very close to each other, and you know, shared experience is one of those things that happens when you when you're standing next to each other, and that's why this Moon Queen, is, despite her having a very good early start and being five one and two, yeah. she's only level ten when you compare that to the Night Hound, who actually is also five one and two. <laughs> um, but you know, he hasn't been grouping up with uh, his team as much as Moon Queen has, so yeah, that's why he's getting those more more of those levels there. Yeah, and I think you, you made a great point earlier how Moon Queen should. Definitely go to the jungle. I mean, this is the first time I've actually seen her really come to the jungle and take out these camps. Now, she just took out, I believe it was a triple stack. That's only a single stack right here. But uh, she is now in the jungle, not only hopefully, or ideally getting some individual experience. Granted, she does have some of the players nearby, so maybe it is being shared. But um, she is getting some good farm once again, picking it back up. But, you know, that level 11 mark is going to be huge. We've seen two ultimates from her that have been pretty damn effective. Uh, but the second one just not able to push it over there. She's at the top of the target tonight, but a walk cost right here for Jerezaya. Wushin will get taken out. Don't know if that was worth it. And Nighthound also picking off Aluna in the jungle. So, yeah, Nighthound is going to start getting really scary here for this Legion team. They're, they're, they got quite a bit of squishies on their side. You got your Myrmidon, you got your Aluna, hell, even your Moon Queen and Polywog Priest, where if they get caught with that smoke cloud, that purge, I mean, it could be pretty damn difficult to get away from by yourself. So. Clan Milk could have grew up here, though, at the top lane. Four of them are here. Nighthound pushing the middle lane. Very aggressive pushing coming out here from uh, Clan Milk now. Yeah, I mean, that smoke bomb from Nighthound is one of the best spells in the game. It really, really is. It has such a huge AoE. Actually, fight a Bruin up here. The Moon Finale does come out. Electrician does fall. The Kel Field goes on to Myrmidon and Moon Queen, so they will take that kill and probably not do anything with it. They might have some aggression come out because Nighthound is sitting behind. He does take out Myrmidon. The Kel Field is not up, but Nighthound doesn't care. He's just going to tear apart 
this uh, Legion team right here. He might actually go and pursue the Aluna, but no, uh, he will back off and Cherizai heals him. So, yeah, Nighthound is just getting really, really farmed right now, and it's got to be pretty scary for Grab Lords. Yeah, you, you just you just kind of feel that, you know, if, if Grab Lords could just group up as a team and get a team fight going, I mean, it seems like these last couple of instances, it's been very scattered for them. I mean, right there, Jeraziah was, of course, dead. He went for the Knight at the top, which he got, but he died after that. So that they were fighting a four versus five at that time, and they actually did, they got the quick burst on the Electrician. So it really made it into a four versus four. But then again, as you mentioned, we saw Nightown come in and uh, do the damage that he did. So it, with Jeraziah there, definitely could have been very different in favor of 240B even. So uh, I just feel like 240B, you know, again, the, the coordination is definitely not there in the fullest. And if, but if they do put it together, if they actually are there in a 5 versus 5 fight, of course not only will the numbers make sense in terms of having a better chance, but you know, this is honestly not that bad of a team when it comes to team fighting, starting with that Jerezai. Of course you are dealing against a night hand, but you know, I, that makes you also wonder, well again, going back to that bound eye, it is difficult, you know, who do you get it on if you do at this point, but um, then at the very least, make sure you have revelations if not dust. And on that note, I mean, what, what would you prefer? Uh, obviously bound eye, the ultimate, but Dust or Revelations, if you can have only one, or uh, would well, you both? Or? I would have to say Revelations right now, especially now that um, the Purge stick is up on Nighthound, because he can just purge the dust from himself. True. Um, so normally I would say Dust, because uh, it just follows them. You know, it's kind of homing, mm -hmm. if you will. Actually, the Kelfield coming out onto Moon Queen. Uh, offensive Master Call come out in Nighthound. Oh. The, uh, the Protective Charm there goes out on Moon Queen. She will be fine. Also with some assistance from some TPs from Myrmidon and Luna, and Clan Milk will back off. So, um, yeah, actually that Shrunken Head is almost there to be picked up on Moon Queen. So I imagine that this is going to be a much better fight for them uh, when they get that. But you know, granted, they are still 13k in the hole as far as gold goes, 12k in experience. So it's still going to be very, very hard for them. Clan Milk's in a great position, but it's not to say this is over because I'm sure these fights will be. A lot better once that trunk head is picked up on Moon Queen. Yeah, and you know, as you even mentioned right there, the offensive master's call used by Master of Arms, that's been now the second or third time that we've actually seen at this game. Uh, trying, at least trying to, if not even working out for a kill for Clan Milk. You know, I believe we talked about the last time when we saw Master of Arms, how we just don't see that enough. We, we always see the defensive one that seems to be saved just for the defensive one. But it's good to see GG Sucker here using it offensively. They're going to go in. Will this be enough? The Polywire Priest going to jump. Out comes the Weefo. Can they see Polywire? Yes, they can. They the last second. Out comes the Soul's Blessing, I believe. No, he tried to, but it got canceled because of the uh, Nighthound. We just seen the background Moon Queen with the Moon Finale. Trying to get in there. It's but he gets frozen. And again, the Legion team is just way too scattered. They're not fighting as a team. Team. Jeraziah is going to get picked off here. It looks like great weed field once again. And actually, that might be enough. No, it's not. The Shell Surf comes out. Down goes the Luna. Down goes Jeraziah. And a Hatcher coming out for Shams, actually, on that Nighthound. So Moon Queen way up there in those front lines. And Jeraziah was doing his darnest to get to her, but he could just not get there. I mean, he was getting locked down by Nighthound and everyone else. It just wasn't going to happen. So great coordination at the same time from Clan Milk there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's... It's really hard when you're playing up against a Nighthound because despite even having a revelation, actually, I'm, yeah, that was a revelation by Rover there. Despite having that, uh, it, Nighthound's always going to find a good position, and it, it's hard to pick off these fights when you can have the chance of Nighthound picking off one of your heroes instantly and not being part of the fight. So Nighthound's really great in that regard, and now he has his shrunken head, I believe. He just purchased the recipe, but of course I can't really tell if it's the whole... Oh, yep, he does have the full thing. Yeah. So he's going to be pretty much unstoppable at this point. His farm is about 470 gold per minute, highest in the game. He's just doing a, doing a fantastic job. We've seen a lot of great play from Shams out in the last... Uh, Time, you know, a few times we've cast him in. Yeah. So um, he's been really improving as a player, and the team, I mean, they, they kind of had a rocky start in the beginning there. But uh, and now some initiation coming out on the Polywog. But Bubbles might actually be in some trouble. The wards do come out. The Wheatfield hits. The heals and protective charms come out from Jeraziah. And they're trying to turn this. It could be a good turn. Uh, Glacius is getting slowed there by the aura from Jeraziah. Defensive Master's Call actually on Bubbles. Great defensive Master Call. They're coming out from GG Sucka. And actually, Creams does get taken out pursued by Wooshin there. But uh, here comes the counter initiation. I'll let you take over, Brady. Yeah, Nighthound on Jerezai, but you see right there the purge order he uses. He uses the Soul's Blessing. He's just going to port the hell on out of there. So doing it for himself, but, uh, you know, really you can't blame him too much. Polywog Priest does get picked up to the side as Cake's actually an electrician. Gets credit for the kill right there. So as you said, that's like right on cue. Here comes Nighthound, though, and all of a sudden the fight's pretty much over. So uh, the Legion team was forced to full-on retreat right there, and obviously we see how Jerezai get away, but now he doesn't have a Soul's Blessing for another two minutes here. And uh, obviously I'm sure 
Clan Milk very aware of that, and they may try to take advantage here as Glacius just resurrects. So uh, they're going to steal some Ancients, steal some Jungle Creeps. May not look to push just too much just yet, but again, the advantage is obviously there. 20,000 goal lead, 20,000 wow. experience lead. And we are just now 26 and a half minutes in. So Moon Queen, as great as a game she has had, honestly, it's just it's really been slowing down, slowing down more and more as this game has progressed. And you, know, you just can't have that happen if you want to be successful here for Grab Lords. I mean, she's still sitting around 300 gold per minute, but that's definitely down from what it was earlier. Now she has got enough gold to purchase her recipe at least uh, for the Shrunken Head. So uh, granted, for some reason she decides to not do it. I mean. <laughs> Uh, she should do it, have the Shrunken Head, so at least they should have that going into the next fight. And that will be big, as always, but, you know, is it going to be enough at this stage in the game? It's going to be difficult, so. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was certainly a fun tri lane to watch, wasn't it, though? I yeah. mean, Moon Queen, Aluna, and Mermaid, it worked out well. It was fun. I, I wasn't a believer, but uh, they proved me wrong, and it was definitely fun to watch. They got some good kills there. Um... But yeah, this is definitely looking out of hand at this point. 21k in both regards. I, I don't even know how they got it. It's like, I mean, it is 24 to 12, <laughs> but I wouldn't expect the gap, the gap to be this wide. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I look at the creep farm on the stats tab there, and just so much more CS on the Hellborn team from a lot of different heroes. You know, 120 on Bubbles, uh, 150 on Alec, 150 on Nighthound, where the top farmer for you know, Legion side is 100 with Moon Queen. Yeah. And so um, even Master of Arms has 70 creep kills. And actually, who is that getting caught it's up Nighthound. here? Nighthound gets caught, actually. Um, Mass CC, the defensive Master's Call comes out, but not going to be enough. And Smoker gets the uh, Bloodbath streak from Shams. An extra about 700 gold there for him. So a good pickoff. A step in the right direction, but is it going to be enough? I'm not quite <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, he did just buy his Abyssal Skull, so no buyback money here for Shams. He's down for another minute. Uh, so at the very least, this is obviously a chance now for Grab Lords to, to pick up a little bit of momentum here and uh, maybe even get a secondary tower. I wouldn't be surprised because with Nighthound dead, the Hellborn team does lose a lot of damage potential, that's for sure. So, uh, But Grab Lords, they are not going to push. Instead, they're porting back mid. Very interesting. Now, the middle tower was dropping here, uh, but it was only a solo bubbles doing his thing. So the solo bubbles enough distraction, apparently, uh, to port everyone back to the middle lane. I don't know about that. I feel like they could have definitely gone to the secondary tower and still maybe even saved uh, the middle tower there. But they decide to go back and play very, very safe. You know, which when you're down by so much, can you really afford that? I don't know. But they got the kill, so that's a good thing. Now Nighthound will be back up in the next by five seconds, and then he'll be back to farming, I'm sure. But now they did show that, you know, of course, with a lot of CC on this team and if it could, some good jump potential that they can catch a players here and there and get some free kills so yeah polywog is definitely a great hero to have against the nighthound the only thing i think of is okay polywog goes and gets that morph on a nighthound he can't use his trunk head very susceptible but then it's a matter of can you trust your teammate enough to, to counter initiate and that's going to be bubbles who blinks in behind them silences them so cancels the follow-up on a nighthound um yeah. so i i think it's going to be just way too hard if clan milk is responding and communicating well and, and skype or whatever uh, because they've been playing pretty well, and Moravis, despite that kind of weird uh, weird thing that happened up at the top lane with the buyback and, and the weird shell surf, mm -hmm. other than that, he's actually played quite a, a very good game this entire game. So Yeah, definitely has. Uh, Moravis is going to use shell surf right here, but he's going to get a jump action by Polar Priest jumping in with that return target. It's purged off immediately, though, and he's going to end up falling, but the soul's buzzing in the background. The moon finale activated by look at Nighthound tear it up, Aluna. Nighthound does have the token alive, so even if he falls, he will be coming back up. Defensive Master's Call used, and now Glacius is going to fall, but the Defensive Master's Call doing a lot of work right there, and Moon Queen will end up dying as well as everybody else. Genocide coming out for Clan Milk. Honestly, a fairly solid attempt there from Gladbloods. Again, you're down by so much, you might as well take a risk. In the end, though, not enough. We do have a victory coming out for Clan Milk here in game number one. As uh, we do see as my game decides to just freak out all of a sudden. But anyways, uh, game number one is complete. Clan Milk taking the first game over Grab Lords there. And now, like I was saying, though, really for Grab Lords, you know, obviously, you know, I, I don't want to sit here and say we weren't expecting much out of them. We're just, we don't know what to expect of them. You know, they're 0-4 here in Group D. You know, they're really an unknown team among some giants here in the Hong competitive scene. Right. They didn't do that bad. I mean, even as unique of a lineup it was, that trial and as you talked about, that was fun to watch. We had a Miramid on yep. Moon Queen Aluna trial, and it actually worked out pretty damn effectively. And it's I, I don't think it's I don't think Clan Milk was necessarily trolling by any means. I mean, they they were playing a solid game themselves. You know, granted some mistakes here and there, sure, but Grappler showed that they actually 
can compete, to say the least. I mean, th this makes Game 2 even that much more interesting now. Yeah. Going into it. I'm excited to see what heroes they decide to bring to the table. Now, Jeraziah, first pick, always very strong. Yeah. Um, and then that tri that we saw, again, it was very, very fun to watch, and they coordinated it absolutely well. So the communication's there, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that, the, that they're learning a lot from this series. And uh, it's unfortunate. Moravis did a very, very good job in mid. That kind of yeah. really set the tone for the rest yeah. of the game. And, and Moravis just got to give uh, MVP status to him. Uh, despite all the kills happening on that Nighthound, wow, he's doing so much damage, but uh, <laughs> uh, it really was Moravis setting the tone. He did a lot of roaming around yeah, in Genki once he hit level big. 6 with that Kelp field. So uh, good job, well played. But like as you said, Grab Lords, they put up a fight. And, uh, actually, were looking pretty good there in the beginning. They, they did what they needed to do with the Jirazai, and that's group up early. Um, although I, c I think they could have had a little bit more farming on Moon Queen when she got that Whispering Helm, mm -hmm. sat back in the jungle, maybe just took the jungle farm for herself, and let, let, let maybe a Luna or someone else get a little bit more farm. Um, but you know you'll you live and learn. So yeah, exactly. You know maybe stacking out that jungle a little bit more, going to the jungle right away. You know similar to a rune cleaver for your dark lady or mage right. win or whatever. A whispering helm for a moon queen. It's a very very similar concept because of that glaive ability already uh, applying the the you know extra damage on the extra on more creeps. Whatever you get the point. Uh, so right there though, again clan milk though they they do come out on top. They're up one game to nothing now. It's best of the three. So game number two going to be coming at you just around the corner, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Game number two, Grab Lords taking on Clan Milk. What's going to happen? Well, you have to tune in and find out.